Just love what Dior has been doing lately. Interesting. 120 PSI in the tires. Dude, I am learning so much about road bikes. Bruce, this magazine is from 1991. It's like more than 30 years old. There are a lot of myths about road bike technology. Really? And I think today's the day we gotta debunk some of these myths. All right, teach me. Well, I'm still working on this article about Mary J. Blige, so Ooh. give me a few minutes. What's going on with her? I'm Spencer. I'm Bruce. This is Shop Talk. The world of cycling is full of myths, Bruce. We can't cover all of them today, but I say we try to tackle five of the key myths about road bike technology. Great, and you know where a lot of these myths start is the pro peloton. That's true, and we just so happen to have three ex-pro cyclists here at the pros closet. I bet they'll be super helpful when we try to understand these myths and maybe debunk them a little. Definitely, let's go talk to them. I mean, tire pressure is the one we always come back to, right? Yeah. yeah. What's your number? 120. 120? <laughs> yeah, 120. How what? Do you think that is faster? Definitely, yeah. I don't believe that wider tires are, and lower pressures are faster. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. So you're, Whoa. Gonna, <laughs> so you're flipping the myth on its head. Uh, uh, 23C tires at 110 PSI, that's, what, that's, that's my go-to, I'm sticking with it. Wait, wait. Let's run through some of your racing experience. Giro d'Italia? Yeah. Vuelta a España? Yeah. Perry roubaix Dauphiné, Torino. Tour of Flanders? Tour of Flanders, did some races. What higher pressure would you run? It depends. When, when I was racing, I think, we were running like 110 PSI more or less. Right now, I'm riding tubeless, so uh, max 60 PSI, so it kind of Whoa, all depends. Oh, 60. It sounds like all the pros, when they were racing, they're running well over 100 PSI. Yeah, I, I'm not shocked by that, Bruce. I think one nuance here is that most of the time they're riding tubular tires, which do behave a little differently than your average clincher or tubeless. Sure. However, what does the data show? I mean, it. There is like a sweet spot with tire pressure and 110, 120 PSI, it's kind of too high because you have this thing. Hysteresis. 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 Hysteri Hysteresis. Hysteresis. Anyway, the tire flexes to absorb, you know, real world road conditions. Chip seal, bumps, that sort of thing. Yeah, and if you're running too high of a pressure, can't do that. Hmm. And you lose speed that way. Hmm, well I guess that one's maybe yeah. a little bit debunked. Did you slam your stem? Oh yes, of course. Oh my God. <laughs> Look how tall he is though, yeah. it's not fair. <laughs> you chose to slam your stem. I chose it, yeah. It yeah. was at a 17 degrees down. Slam stem is a, uh, a vestige of bike snobbery. Oh. That is unnecessary. Oh. Stem, stem should be wherever you puts you in the most comfortable position on the bike. It worked well Got for him. stage races of week long, but as soon as I did the Giro after 10 days, I was just in pain in my neck, just riding mm. in that position, so. Comfort, yeah. Is it everything? Yeah. Are you, are you, you slam your stem, Solly? No, no, I don't slam the stem. You don't? No, I don't slam. In my mind, Bruce, there's an ideal um, aesthetic look to a bike. You gotta have your stem in the right place. It's not too high, it's not too low, it's just, mm. It's kind of like the golden ratio. You got to be able to pedal comfortably. Yeah, but, exactly. but your bike looked good. It did look really good, yeah. <laughs> Number two, slam that stem. Thanks to the internet, a lot of people try to get their handlebars, their stem as low as possible on their road bike frame. Yeah, it seems like the consensus with our pros is like actually raising it a little bit for more comfort is better. And that's smart because everybody has different torso length, arm length, hamstring flexibility, back flexibility. These factors go into comfort and if you're not comfortable, you're not gonna be able to put out watts. I don't care how many Instagram likes you're getting. That's what it matters, yeah. putting out the watts. <laughs> A certain bike company out there seems to think that, quote, aero is everything. Is it everything? I mean, it's nice to have a fast bike, but... 
this I wouldn't compromise weight for error, but I also wouldn't compromise error weight for error. You know? Whoa, it's like but a yin yang. Just, it oh, needs man. to be the perfect bike. You know? <laughs> so, how important are aerodynamics to you on a scale of Me personally? four to 12? Uh, five. Oh, not, whoa. not at all. On a scale of one to 10, is aero everything? Uh, it depends on the event. You're not giving me a number. Scale of one to 10. Uh, five. I'll put right in the middle. Five. For our third myth, you've definitely heard this one before. Aero is everything. Oh, I love those clever bike marketing phrases, but I don't think that the pros here at the pros closet agree. They seem pretty indifferent about aerodynamics of their bikes. It's really not as big a deal as we think. The bike really accounts for 25 to 30% of total drag. The least aerodynamic thing on your bike is you, the rider. So doing things like getting a low position, as low as you can go and wearing an aero helmet, they're gonna make a bigger difference than, you know, obsessing over like getting your bike perfect with little aero bars and all those little things. And cautionary tale, sometimes you can go too far with aerodynamics. Take for example this helmet, which is not really a helmet. It's a piece of plastic. Very smooth though. Bike weight, scale of one to 10. Nine. Ooh. He's so old school. <laughs> and, and wheels too. Wheels got to be super light. We used to add weight where it was low near the bottom bracket to keep the bike uh, at 6.8 kilograms and save weight in other places, keeping the wheels as light as possible. How much did you uh, care about bike weight? Not so much. Um, I think if you can find the perfect balance between aero, weight, what's comfortable, what's going to last, I, I would. I would say that goes further than trying to gain X or 100 grams here or there. I think you can make small adjustments just by thinking about the amount of food that you carry in your pockets. You can easily like carry way too much and that is 100 grams right there. Number four, maybe bike weight is the most important thing. I mean, the pros seem to think that. They all cared about the weight of their bike quite a lot. It's an easy thing to obsess over, but think about it. In fact, we've talked about it on this very show. The bike itself is just a small proportion of the overall package deal, including your body weight. So even if you're dropping a couple pounds from your bike, and that's just about a percentage dis difference or something, it's a very small difference. And it can be taken too far. Yeah, remember 70s and 80s, they were doing drillium. They were literally drilling holes in components to try and shed grams. And uh, you ask me, that's crazy, man. For our last myth, a lot of people are obsessed with having the latest, greatest tech. But honestly, road bikes haven't changed that much in the last five years. That's exactly true, Bruce. And you know, these bike marketer types, like I said before, they like to kind of put you in a bind and get you thinking that you have to do something crazy to your bike to get the maximum performance. But there's a few things you can focus on when you're shopping for a bike that'll really get you something that'll work great for years and years. Yeah, I think uh, right now, hydraulic disc brakes, they're standard. Stick Absolutely. Yep. You do that. I think you also want to make sure that your bike has through axle hubs and frame, which is sort of a future-proof technology as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and you don't need the latest crazy wireless drivetrain. As long as it's got 11, 12 speeds, you're good. Exactly. Once again, the future-proof concept. Finally, here's an easy one. You just put on some fresh tires, fresh bar tape, and that bike will feel pretty much like new. Dude, good tires make a huge difference. Exactly. So if you're buying a bike that's been made in the last five years or so, you're going to score. Yeah, for most riders, this is all you need. Maybe not the flashiest bike, but it's a great buy, and it'll serve you well for many, many miles. Justin, what's the most money you ever made in a year from being a pro bike racer? Really? Uh, Half a mil? Like <laughs> 750,000? Knock like three zeros off of that and we're probably in the 